Hello everybody, it's Mrs. Pound and we are studying chapter 34 on electric current. Our objectives for today's video are to describe the factors that determine the resistance of a wire, relate the amount of current in a circuit to the voltage impressed across the circuit and the resistance of the wire, and explain why wet skin increases the likelihood of receiving a damaging electric shock when a faulty electric device is touched. So let's first talk about electric resistance. Electric resistance is the resistance of a material to the flow of current through it measured in ohms. So if we look at this stream flowing, there is some resistance to the flow of the stream by the rocks, okay? And so electricity, the flow of electrons also has some resistance that I'll talk to you about here in a minute. Ohms which is uh, the capital Greek letter omega is its symbol, is the SI unit of electrical resistance. One ohm is the resistance of a device that draws a current of one ampere when a voltage of one volt is impressed across it. So electrical resistance in a wire depends on three things. The first is the conductivity of the material. So in the background here, I have a bunch of different coins made out of different metals. And different materials have different resistances because it depends on how loosely bound the electrons are, in fact, in the metal. If you were to take a look at the periodic table, Okay, copper, silver, and gold are all excellent conductors. But of the three, gold is the best conductor, actually. Um, we don't use it, though, because it is so expensive compared to copper. Um, and silver, as well, is more expensive than copper. But uh, gold is, in fact, the best conductor. And the reason gold is the best conductor is because if you look at them on the periodic table, gold, they're all in the same column, but gold is farther down. It has more energy levels. Therefore, its electrons are more, not as attracted to the positive charge in the nucleus. So they're more free to move than silver. And because silver is just above gold and silver more so than copper, which is above co uh, the silver. So it depends on how attracted they are to the nucleus of the atoms. Another factor is the thickness of the wire. Thick wires have less resistance than thin wires, and this is a lot like water pipes here. If you look in the background, I have many pipes with many different thicknesses, and you would know that if you want the most current, so to speak, to go through these pipes, the most water to travel through them, you would choose the biggest pipe. You will get the best flow of water through them. And the same is true with wires. The thicker the wire, the more, the fatter it is, the less resistance there is because there's more pathways for the current to flow. And then the third is the length of the wires. Long wires have more resistance than short wires. And this, again, just has to do with resistant, uh, resistance as far as how much contact there is. If you have a long pipe, there's going to be more friction for water. If you have a long wire, there are more nuclei, positive charges, for, to attract that those electrons in that current along the way. So let's take a look at Ohm's law. And Ohm's is a scientist who studied resistance. That's why the unit Ohm's for resistance is named after him. Ohm's law states that the current in a circuit is directly proportional to the voltage impressed across the circuit and is inversely proportional to the resistance of the circuit. So it's actually easier to write it as an equation, and it's I for current equals V for voltage, or voltage over R for resistance, and I have those down here, so go ahead and write that down. And we can see here, looking at the equation, this makes sense. 
because we have compared voltage to how slanted the potential, right? How slanted, say, the landscape is for a stream to flow. And if our voltage is higher, our potential difference is higher, we have more flow than if it's flatter and there's less potential difference. And so we can see that if there's more of a potential difference, then we're going to have more current. Also, if we think about resistance on the bottom, the more resistance, the more held back the current or the water is, the less current we have, the less flow we have. And so it just, if you think about it, makes sense. And as far as units are concerned, uh, remember an ampere is the unit for current. And one ampere is equal to one volt per ohm, according to the equation. So let's talk about Ohm's law and electric shock. Let's talk about something really practical here um, that you should know because it could potentially save your life um, knowing some of this information. So the first thing we need to know is that electric shock in the human body is caused by current, not by voltage. You could actually come in contact with a very high voltage source and not be shocked as long as no current passes through your body. It's when the current passes through your body that you are in danger, especially if it goes across your heart. That is why electricians, if they're not sure about a circuit, they will actually put one hand behind their back because and just work with one hand because what that does is it prevents them from reaching out and touching something over here and causing a path for the current to go through through their heart. Instead, the current will go through their arm and down through their legs, hopefully bypassing their heart because... When you receive a shock, it actually causes muscles in your body to contract. I know once when I was a kid, um, we lived by a farm and I accidentally touched an electric fence with a stick, which actually should have been a pretty good insulator, but it did not insulate me that day. Um, and what happened is when I touched the stick to the fence, I actually couldn't let go because the current that was produced caused my muscles to contract and I couldn't let go of the stick, okay? I couldn't let go of the stick. So also if they're concerned, if an electrician is concerned about there being some faulty wiring or something, they will not grab something like this for fear that they won't be able to let go. They'll put their hand to the back of it so that their hand doesn't clench around it. Okay. Um, the other issue is that, do you know that if somebody's heart rhythms are not correct, we actually shock them to get their heart to be in the correct rhythm. Actually, uh, the reason electricity does this to our body is because we do have electrical impulses that control our muscles going through our body. Uh, we have a pacemaker in a sense in our heart that is an electrical impulse that causes all of the cells in the heart to contract together. And so if you are shocked, you can actually cause your heart to stop because it messes up with the electrical impulses of the heart causing it to contract and beat. Now, it is more harmful for you to touch a faulty 120 volt light fixture barefoot in a wet bathtub compared to standing on dry ground wearing gym shoes because the water lowers the resistance of your body so more current flows through your body. Now, if it was distilled water, this would not be an issue. Now, you have also probably maybe experienced this with a battery. Hey, I mean, if we touch a battery both ends with just our dry hands, no issues, right? You do not receive a shock. But have you ever licked the battery and then got a tingle on your tongue and a shock? Yeah. Okay. So it's because you lowered the resistance. Your tongue is wet. Your skin is dry. Also, if you're standing on dry ground and you touch uh, some faulty wiring, the rubber in your shoes uh, has a lot of resistance, so it does not allow the current to flow as readily. However, your uh, bare skin will allow it to flow more readily, plus you probably have some salt on your body, and salt 
allows, if it's dissolved in water, allows for a better flow of current. And so you have lowered the resistance, you have allowed the current to flow more freely. So please, many people are receive electric shocks, uh, not thinking about the fact that their skin is wet. Please do not uh, touch any electrical things um, when you are in when you are wet or when you're in the bathtub or in the shower or anything so that you do not get shocked. Now, how about a bird on wires? Why don't they get shocked? So a bird can perch harmlessly on bare high voltage wires because, and these wires are high voltage that are transporting our electricity, but it's because all parts of its body are at the same high potential. A difference in potential is required to be shocked. Um, Every spot on that wire is at the same voltage, and so they are not shocked. Now, if they were to touch another wire next to it or touch the pole next to it, um, something like that, then they would receive a shock because now there would be a difference in potential, uh, especially if they touch the pole that's uh, hooked to the ground that's uh, zero voltage. Um, so there's a difference in potential and they would have a current that would go across their body and that would kill them. But because they are just on the wire like that. Now, if you were falling and you grabbed onto these wires, you too would be fine unless let's say you were feet touch the ground all of a sudden, or you reached out and you grabbed the hand of somebody trying to save you, then there would be a problem. Then there would be a difference in potential, current would pass through your body, and you would be shocked. Now, you've probably noticed that some uh, plugs, electrical plugs, have two prongs. Some have three prongs. So why the third prong. The purpose of the third prong on the plug of appliances is to connect the body of the appliance directly to the ground. A charge that builds up on the appliance will be conducted to the ground. Um, you'll also notice that that third prong tends to be longer. This is so that it connects first so that if there is say a short in the appliance on the body of the appliance, uh, you will not be shocked. Instead, that will be taken to the ground and will not shock you. Um, so it is a safety feature of appliances to have that third prong, which is called the grounding prong. And it's uh, attached to the grounding wire that takes the current to the ground if there is any in that appliance. So our objectives for today were to describe the conditions for flow of electric charge, describe what is happening inside a current carrying wire and explain why there is no net charge in the wire, and give examples of voltage sources that can contain can maintain a potential difference in an electric circuit. So if you are listening still to this video, I would like you to draw a person next to uh, the title for electric shock with their hair standing on end. So it can just be a stick figure with their hair standing on end to show that they got shocked. And don't forget your five questions. And I will be back with one more video for electric current.